Hey guys, Garrett 97 again, once again with some more new loot. Starting off with the biggest one this month, the Full Armor Unicorn Gundam Destroy Mode. And even though this is a high grade Universal Century, this is one hell of a massive box. This is like twice the size of your average high grade box. Here's the Blue Destiny for comparison, and as you can see, man, that's one hell of a box. I was just about to build the Blue Destiny, but unfortunately, he's gonna have to wait a bit now. Because I think I know which kid is gonna get priority. And let's look at what looks inside. A lot of runners. Those are the stands for the shields, which apparently act like funnels or something. And uh, one set of B parts, one shield, and oh, look at that inner frame. Wait, ah, I see, that's where they are. Interesting. Wait, oh, I see what's going on. So we're not gonna use this one. Probably we're gonna get, yeah, we're gonna have to use these and then. Um, that inner frame, uh, well, that that psycho frame is gonna be movable on the shields. And then let's see, uh, the beam rifle, kind of stuff, some nice detailing. Now for all those extra missiles on there. Uh, let's see what's on here. Uh, more detailing. The shield, the legs. Another shield. Ooh, booster pods. Oh, are we gonna get? I see, so we're... Another shield, another shield. How many shields are we getting with this thing? Wait, sir, wait, doesn't that make like four shields that we're getting? Yeah. Uh, two, three, that's a closed shield. No, three, four, five shields. One closed one, we're gonna get the extra, op the extra open one on here, and then those. How many shields are we getting here? Damn. I guess it's not called full armor for nothing. Ah yes, people, don't forget to buy Gundam Ace Volume 6 because it comes with the Hyper Javelin. Um, which does look pretty nice. Hope it's definitely as good as the one from the Mobile Suit Girl. So let's see. Hmm. Ah yes, here we see the three shields. And then I wonder... Hmm, so is that... Ah, the close one on the back. And we're still gonna get that extra shield. So, officially we're getting four shields, but maybe that fifth one will be usual, will be usable. And that it's just considered as all junk parts, but usable junk parts. Yeah, looking forward to checking that out. Wait, ah, get in there. So much runners. I hope nobody's wearing earphones while watching this. There we go. And now let's see if I can close it again. And I'm just gonna have to leave it like that. Come on. On you go. And man, this is gonna be one hell of a massive thing. Especially with those booster pods at the end. There we go. And unfortunately, this is the only new Gundam kit I got. Well, new Gundam kit. Didn't uh, decide to pick any, didn't decide to pick up any of the others. I didn't decide to pick up the Turn A Gundam, but I did decide to pick up a few of the old Turn A mobile suits. Because, you know, I was kind of running out of money for this month, and, well, not super interested in the Turn A models, but I am, to a certain extent, interested. So I decided to pick these ones up because they were getting restocked, and you never know when they're gonna get another restock. And the mobile flat is definitely, for me, one of the more interesting Turn A designs, because it's very unique. And I think this is also a pretty big machine. Oh, let's see. Um, the specs high 20 meters. Oh, not that big. I thought it was going to be bigger. It's more something like 25 meters. But hey, also, it's like pretty good color separation going on. And I really wonder how it's going to be. Though, the one thing I got to say is the transformation. Well, you know, I think I can transform too, if that's called a transformation, you know, just fold up your legs. Hey, my legs have articulation too. And the Kapool, well, it's, a, it's I guess, technically a turn A mobile suit, but I didn't buy this because it was a turn A mobile suit. I bought this as a double Zeta mobile suit. 
because you know that's what it is. It's not a turn a thing. It's just spelled differently. And well, actually, this is, yeah, somewhat different from this is more a forest green while this is more neon green. Well, too bad. This coach team is better. So let's see. And why is the manual yet another different color? I mean, yeah. The manual is lighter, and the actual plastic is neon. Fantastic. Make up your minds, people. Come on. Close. Close. There we go. Then the mobile sumo, which was originally supposed to be the Tornay Gundam. Fun fact. And the silver one, and... Well, it's cheap, I guess. Um, that's kind of what I was expecting. And hey, this is less technical than the Harry Ord version. Hmm, nice. I uh, hadn't picked that up. So I guess there is uh, somewhat of a difference between the normal sumo and Harry sumo. Oh, well, other than that's probably going to be identical, though. This does kind of look better than the gold because the gold looked pretty cheapish and this while it's still cheap it's darker so i guess this does kind of look a bit better and this back and then the final gundam kit we're gonna go even further back in time the no great gundam sandtrack and i'm planning on getting all of the old 144 scale gundam wing models but uh, with their figurines and I had this on back on HLJ. I know they got a restock of pretty much all the old 144 skills But without the figurines and That's really kind of pointless to be honest to get those because you're much better off getting the ones with the figurines The figurines are pretty nice and the ones with the original uh, Mobile suits with the original Gundams actually come with them in their opening poses um, as seen in the opening of the anime So that's really nice. Also, this of course has Somewhat of a nostalgia factor for me because this was one of my first Gundam models ever. And oh yeah, come to think of it, I haven't uploaded uh, the sixth Q and A yet. And <laughs> um, let's put it like this: I already filmed it, so when you watch the sixth Q and A, you're gonna know why I wanted to pick up a new Sandrock. Yes. So something to look forward to. And, well, it's pretty much the standard fare for the Gundam Wing things. The face is going to look a bit derpy. We get these weird um, stickers. And by weird, I mean the stickers are metallic, but the rest of the model kit is matte. So they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, not a lot. Well, decent. Half decent. Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. Half decent color separation. Uh, of course, they're going to require a lot of painting. But hey, I'm glad to have this thing again. Let's see what we have here. Manual and of course a color guide for the figurine. Oof! Manual for the figurine really needed that. Super important. You're never gonna know how to put that thing together otherwise. And yeah, pretty standard fare. As usual, ah uh, yes, some kind of blinding thing it could do with the eyes. So it's kind of like a dom in that aspect. So, putting this back in there. Close it up. Next up is not Gundam, but it is a model kit. Well, it's a bunch of model kits. It is the Dagram Collector's Box. And the one thing I'm wondering right now is if these 144 scales, if they are uh, just re-releases of their older counterparts or if these are new molds but based on bigger counterparts kind of like Bandai did um, a whole while back they had a bunch of these 1 288 scale figures which were the antique ones from the early 70s but they well they were one second scale of those 144 scales so I think they might have done the same with these because as far as I know Almost all the Dagram kits are 172nd scale or 148th scale. So it's very... 
Uh, how should we say that? It's very a big coincidence that they are just half scale of that. So I do wonder, and well, I'll open up the individual box at the end. Let's look at what else we got. And the final thing for model kits is something I was completely surprised by, literally shocked, because I couldn't believe they still had this. I mean, seriously, it blew my mind. They had Hobby Japan, but not just any Hobby Japan. This is the Hobby Japan with the high grade seat custom kit. They had this in stock and not just one. I got two of these and I think, yeah, as of right now, they still have these in stock. And I found this by accident because I remembered, well, going back to our unicorn here, I forgot if I'd already pre-ordered the Beam Javelin or not. So I, and I wasn't sure if it was with Gundam Ace or with Hobby Japan. So I just typed in Hobby Japan with, because you know, it's um, with uh, Gundam Seed Custom with Beam Javelin. And when I was looking down the list, I suddenly saw they had this in stock with the Gundam Seed Custom Kit. And I, I really scanned the page because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't some kind of marking in red that said magazine only, not the seed custom kit. But as far as I know, this was discontinued right after it was released. I, mean, I wanted to pre-order this, but by the time I pre-ordered, well, I was going to pre-order it, it was already uh, a pre-order stop. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this was discontinued right afterwards. So I don't know, how did this happen? Then, I can't imagine a magazine like this being uh, re-released or maybe they just found a box hanging around somewhere like, oh, hey guys, looks like we still have like 10 of these Gundam Seed custom kits hanging around. Let's put them on the website, shall we? Yeah, I, oh, I, I also remember these being on eBay for like $50 or something like that. I went like, wow. But now I got these for uh, 1,200. Oh, there's a the price, 1,229 yen. Oh. 1,290 yen apparently, one or the other. So that's like $13, 10, nine euros with the current exchange rate. So I was blown away they still had this. And like I said, I immediately bought two of these because technically they're seed custom kits, but really I want to find out how many more model kits just happen to be compatible with those things and to make some very, interesting things. Unfortunately, the this joint, well, it doesn't seem to work that great with the gym just standing there because looks like his legs a bit too long, but hey, just add some extra nice bend. So if it works with the high grade gym here, maybe it just works with a bunch of other kits too. So really stoked to try out how these work, but unfortunately experimenting is gonna have to wait until after the Unicorn Gundam here. And of course, yes, it's not a coincidence. I'm definitely going to have some fun with this joint set and with the other joint sets I just got. And really, I can't wait to see how that's going to turn out. And talking about those weapon sets, well, here's a quick sneak peek at what I've cooked up so far. You know, twin, well, triple Gatling guns. And these swords are much nicer than I expected. Turning it around, you can see that this is the old striker pack attached to that striker pack base with the uh, the gun barrel striker attached to the back and this thing has a lot of firepower going on with the beam carabine. Then another thing I got is a remake, just trying to get the other dagger to stand up because it's very back heavy. And this is a remake of my nuclear, of my custom nuclear striker. And the cool thing is this time, the pods of the Ale Striker fit on there. So he gets his extra thrust and I love that I was able to do this. But let's go on with the new loot because there's still one more thing to come. Oh no wait, two more things to come. But first of all, it's the Figure Arts Sailor Venus, my favorite of all of the Sailor Scouts by a long shot. And well, Looking at it so far, it's a fantastic figure and I can't wait to take her out of her box. And really, really nice. Also, love the text at the side here and especially the last line, pursuing character expression through humanoid action. Well, they definitely understand the basics of making humanoid action figure. Now, it would be kind of awkward if she had, um, uh, you know, something like octopus movement. It's a humanoid figure. Then, 
The other thing I got is the Hako Vision Gundam thing. And at first I wasn't really sure what this was gonna be like exactly. But um, what it turns out to be is kind of disappointing. What it is, is this here. It's a cheap plastic thing you put at the end. You rip open the top because you're actually going to use the box itself as this base here. And then you have this plastic sheet you put on there to reflect the images. And then you just take your smartphone, put it on there. Well, you scan the QR code that's on the side here. And you put it on there and it displays an image on there. First of all, the 3D effect they're going for isn't really all that visible. Second, lining it up seems to be quite a task because for some reason, um, whenever you have like one thing lined up, the other thing isn't lined up. So it's always a very fiddly process by the time you get it working. Another problem, another problem with that is it's only a six minute video that they're showing you. So by the time you have it set up, the video is probably already over. And that brings us to already the fourth point. I was expecting this to be some kind of desktop, uh, how to put it, a desktop thing that like just shines a bunch of light on there. Not some kind of seizure inducing very loud video thing. I thought this was going to be more of a relaxing thing. Like you have your Gundam there, all kinds of light, like a light show going on. And you just have this on, on your desk somewhere on the top of your computer or whatever. And it's a constant loop, you know, something that always loops and just like very nice colors, a soft loop, or you have the choice. You can do that or you can have the more action thing, but no, it's firing beam rifles, um, got all kind of stuff going on. So really, um, if it was more of a relaxing thing, that would have been really nice. But this is something you put it together. You wonder why you spend your money on it. You, you watch the video once and you realize, well, I might just watch it on my computer and the video isn't that impressive either. So to anyone who's still considering getting this, well, I wouldn't really recommend it at all. I think, yeah, it was around 1,000 yen, like nine, yeah, 1,000 yen for both, but uh, you can definitely get some better things for that. The one cool thing though is you do get one free chewing gum. Yeah, totally worth it now. Uh, so yeah, let's put these to the side and I think I'm gonna try to forget about buying these because, well, they're for the 35th anniversary, but yeah, I don't think I'm really going to use this. I'll probably put them in a display case and um, kind of forget about them because that's really the bottom line. They're forgettable. Why would you put something like this on your desk to have a six minute video of just a, of just a bunch of loud noises? Why would you want something like that on your desk? Especially since your computer can offer you the same damn thing. So then let's grab the Dagram box again. And let's see at what resides inside. First of all, funny thing to point out is Doyusha leading the world in model technology. So the first thing I'm not sure of, like I said, is are these remolds or are these new models? Because that's very important for this slogan. And I'm pretty sure that at the time, this would be Bandai. Guess, you know, kind of leading the world in model technology. Pretty sure that's Bandai. But hey, so I gotta say that these figures, even if they are only half-scale counterparts of what they're supposed to be, I would say that they're still better than contemporary models of Bandai, if that's the case. So let's take him out. Out he come. And one thing that makes me believe that these are at very least recasts, let's put this flap open. Whew, I found a use for the Hako Visions. Or maybe not. Yes, use for the Hako Visions. Oh yeah. So, this is a very retro looking box. This is exactly what you would get in the 70s. Really nice looking box. And when we look at the inside, yeah, very tiny, very small. So it really makes me think that this is a half scale model of the old figures, but I don't have the old model, so I can't really confirm. And they're also pretty hard to find. But I gotta say, for what they are, 
they're really nice. You just look at it and has this old school vibe and some nice color separation going on. They will require a bit of painting, but not that much. When you look at the box here, I think the only painting required is the legs will need a bit of orange or do they need the white? Let's see where they like. Oh, the legs will need a bit of white, the feet will need a bit of white, and the chest will need a bit of white. So it's just like the Gundam the Wing models. Then we have the Saltic. This is the Kor Korchima. Hmm. I can't remember them being called Korchima. Wasn't it more like Kojima? Oh well. And then let's see, once again, very good color separation. The only thing that's gonna require painting is some blue on the feet and yeah, that's pretty much all. And oh yeah, the gun probably was, uh, the gun will probably need some painting too. So overall, these are some very nice and cute nifty figurines. And so get a manual once again. This looks very, very retro. So, but I can't tell if they're remolds or not. I went on eBay and I couldn't, and well, it kind of confirmed my suspicion that I could only find 172nd scales on there. But you know, they could always be, uh, it could always be that the 144 scales are just very rare and that none of them happen to be on eBay at the moment. But let's see once again, same story, just a bit of paint on the body and on the feet and then it's going to be pretty much spot on. Let's see, even, <clears throat> now yes, the gun is green anyway, so yeah. And wait, is the gun on the green? Or is the gun gonna require painting? Ah, the gun's gonna require a bit of painting. But hey, not too bad. Though I'm not really sure if I'm gonna build these models right away. Probably gonna, yeah, they're probably gonna have to wait a bit until I uh, get through some other models first. Let's see, let's see, let's look at the little detailing and the little red pods. Wait. Let's see, I can't really find the tubes on the legs. Um, oh, they're probably that. Yeah, let's see. Yep, those are going to require painting. Oh, they're molded on the legs already. Well, they're going to be a bit more difficult to paint. What I also love is there's a difference between the normal diagram and then the diagram yacht type. This is diagram yacht type. The only difference is he has a missile pod in his ear. Normal diagram does not. Because yeah, that's really a good reason to make an entirely different model kit. Marketing. So yeah, this is pretty much exactly the same. Oh, wait, let's see the missile pod. So that must mean that missile pod is on a separate, yeah, knew it, it's on a separate runner. And uh, come on, these runners are definitely gonna be identical, aren't they? Yeah, those runners are exactly identical. This one just has an extra missile pod. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Definitely that back in there. And then some of the more unique Dagram kits, well, Dagram units. Gotta love the Blizzard Gunner. They're pretty much like tanks on legs. And let's see, eight. No, did they have eight of those little vehicles? That would be cool. No, can't see any of the vehicles. Oh wait, is that? Oof, jump cut. Looks like the little vehicle is included. I just looked completely over it. So it turns out that these parts here are for the figure and for the little vehicle. And I, at first when I looked over this, I thought that was part of the Blizzard's fuselage. But this was also somewhat bigger than I was expecting because uh, I guess I'm used to Gundam and I would expect these vehicles to be a lot smaller than the mechs or well mechanized tanks or so which is why I completely looked over it but a nice thing we're getting looks like we do only get one so I wonder what that 8 is I'm pretty sure um, that 8 is not part of this thing's model number so who knows well still wonder what it means so putting this back in here and 
quick look at the manual here you can see small vehicle small tank like thing on wheels it looks like we're getting two tank like things in one set but non-conventional ones let's see if the crab gunner here would that thing come with something extra let's see nope nothing on the box oh we're not getting a little vehicle here well let's open her up and well very purple once again with the marking stickers well uh decals they are water slides i assume and the abitate crab gunner oh, this is the this is the pretty much the go-to example of those um walking tank things in dagram i think they appear quite a lot in the beginning but not as much later on because they're already kind of obsolete near the end but the cool thing is these can actually do a lot of damage against the normal comet armor so it's not like they're obsolete worthless things and that's a cool thing about this then the bigfoot also from salty company and yeah let's oh this com hmm, no color separation going on here which is odd it's all just blue oh, that's a bit of a shame this one seems to be um the least good one and it's not like um there's less colors on here it's not like it's entirely blue when we look at the saltic well the round face i guess i should say um yeah pretty much the exact same color separation yet these ones all the other ones got multiple colors but the poor bigfoot here the color scheme well the color separation is just like the real bigfoot non-existent and well other than that is the usual stuff what I also love is, don't think um, I've pointed out already, but you always have the cockpit in very nice clear plastic, so that's really awesome. So for such small kids, these are really, really well done. Well, considering these would be made in the 80s, of course, that's still that's still the one thing I wonder about. And I've already checked the boxes, and there's nowhere on it where it says like 19 something something. As far as I can tell, it's made in 1829. That makes sense. Uh, let's see the iron foot and I think this was also one of the few ones used by the rebels if I remember correctly yeah either the iron foot or the blockhead I think it was the iron foot now let's see one oh what what happened to the great color separation well we do get a visor but what's going on these are getting less good as we move on um yeah that's a shame what happened to the color separation? We started out really well with these and then they just took a dive. Seriously, serious dive. I mean, one color? Damn. So I love how they started really well with the diagram, the Saltic. I mean, I guess they at least got their two signature uh, machines right. But then we get on with the Bigfoot and the iron foot and let's see oh yeah the blockhead this is of course the same one as the previous blockhead but this is just ah thank god hey, this one might look pretty good just as a straight build might check this thing out i think it's gonna require glue and yeah i'll probably wait uh to paint them also fun thing is this series actually gets less good as it progresses you would expect technology to get better over time but hey a uh, little figure inside that's also the really cool thing once again i don't think i've pointed it out but all of these have their pilot in there with a clear cockpit so overall these are really nifty kits and actually really great kits if they were made back in the 80s and right now i'm really starting to think these are just one second scales of the old 170 second scales just say hey, these are really nice and i think this is almost exactly how the 170 second scales were put together and one final thing about the Dagon's collector box i just discovered when putting the kids back when we pulled it out there's actually a picture of the intro pose of the Dagram being all destroyed and rusted really nice weathered look going on there let's put this back at first i thought this was just a flap that was part of the box but hey that's a cool thing going on so let's close it up 
So that's all for this new loot video. Totally gonna build a full armor unicorn Gundam right now. And after that, I'm gonna continue on building the Blue Destiny Unit 1. And after that, well, leave a comment down below if you guys are interested in, well, particularly interested in any of these um, turn A Gundam models. Definitely gonna um, prioritize these turn A ones. The Kapool, well, it's not a turn A model. Once again, it's a double Zeta model. It's an easy build, looks quite interesting. And the flat, well, that thing is just very unique. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So, that's all for this uh, new loot video, and see you guys next time.